Well, hey guys, how are you? It's Summer with Summer Sweet Shop with you again for this really cute and adorable barbecue set from Simply Renee Sweets. These cutters are from Simply Renee Sweets. You can grab them on her website, but I'm super excited to decorate these with you. There's so many fun things that you can do with these. It's great for a Father's Day um, gifty, or you could do it for a backyard barbecue. Um, if you have a backyard set coming up, these are such a great addition to that. Plus you've got like National Hamburger Day, National Hot Dog Day, <laughs> National Watermelon Day, so many things that you can do with this awesome set. So today I'm gonna to show you how to decorate these cookies step-by-step. Step. I'm gonna show you a really cool technique that we're gonna do with the potato chip bag, which is I'm like obsessed with. Um, we are using my um, signature sugar cookie recipe as well as my royal icing recipe. Both are found inside my Cookie Academy um, course, which is my online course for beginners that takes you from start to finish how to make beautiful and delicious, delicious sugar cookies. So you can check the description below and learn more about that. But let's go ahead and get started. We are, um, like I said, decorating these six cookies together tonight. We've got our red outline and flood. We have yellow outline and flood. We have brown outline and flood, ivory outline and flood and we have green outline and flood. So these are the colors that we are gonna be working with tonight. And let's get started. Oh, I am gonna be using a food doodler pen or um, I'm sorry, a black edible marker. This one is from Cookie Countess. I also recommend food doodler as well as um, baker pan, which I get on Amazon, but I really enjoy this one. And we're gonna use a number 101 tip as well for this set. So let's go ahead and get started and right away. All right, so we're gonna start off first with our ketchup and, my, actually, you know what? Let's start off with our hot dog first because it's kind of the easier one. And so we're gonna start off with our hot dog first, this one. Um, it's pretty basic. There's not like a lot of steps with him. Um, so I'm going to start off first with my ivory outline icing. This is my piping icing. And I'm going to outline here on the top where the bun is going to be. We're going to outline our bun first. I know. I see that piece of icing there. We're going to get it. And then we want to come up and around for the other part of our bun. So you want to make sure, and then I'm going to add some squiggle here to make sure that that icing doesn't give a crater because it's a small area. All right, and so we are going to just fill that in. This is my flood icing. And so this is like maple syrup consistency. So those lines there are going to disappear. You won't be able to see them. And then I'm using my scribe, one of my new summer scribes. Hope you can check it out there on my website at summersweetshop.com. but we've got our bun going on here. And you're gonna let this dry. Once you have it done, you're gonna let it dry for about an hour or two before you add your red. You wanna make sure you give it plenty of time to dry because if not, that red is gonna bleed right into that ivory. Okay, so once you do that, my allergies are killing me. Happy summertime. Now, once you do that, you're gonna grab your um, hot dog once it's dry and you're gonna grab your red piping icing and we're gonna outline here where our cute little hot dog's gonna be. And I don't outline here on the edge of the icing of the ivory um, because it's going to, I don't need to. So we're, it's gonna fill in over the top of that. And so I never, rarely do I ever outline up against another space like that where it's um, already been outlined. Cause I like it to go just right up to it 
and kind of over it, honestly. You want to kind of get it to go over it. So we're going to take our scribe and just move that icing around. Look how cute this is. Now you can use your airbrush, <clears throat> excuse me, and you can um, use your airbrush and use ivory um, towers and you can get that um, look here on the edge on the bun would look really pretty as well. I just chose not to do any airbrushing on this set. Um, but the last thing that you're going to do once you fill that in, you're going to let that red dry for a good amount of time. And then you can add some mustard to your hot dog like that. Normally I would let it dry <coughs> and you're gonna have your hot dog. Look how cute that is. Isn't it adorable? So cute and really easy to do. All right, so next we're gonna do our watermelon. Um, so this watermelon can be a lot of different things. It doesn't have to be just a watermelon. It can be, um, now I'm trying to think, it could be a slice of pizza. It could be, um, Oh my goodness, now I can't think of the things it could be. But you're gonna first outline in the green. And this is just mint green, but Americolor is the color I'm using. Add my little squiggle in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my red right up against it and the only reason i'm doing that is because i'm going to add that white line so it doesn't matter it's not going to even if it does bleed i'm going to have a white line there so it will be just fine all right now i'm going to grab my green flood icing and we are going to um do our green flood icing on the top here of our watermelon. Now you could add in some light green if you wanted to, just to give it a little extra dimension. I was keeping the colors pretty simple, so I didn't add any here. Okay, and then you're gonna add your red, whoops, So you're just gonna fledge your red. I like to go from the outside and work my way towards the middle. You want it to be that puffy icing. I'm just kind of moving my scribe and moving my icing around in a circular motion. I find that it's the best way to get up over those lines so that they kind of disappear and you can't see them. That's my little trick, is you're gonna just um, do a circular motion. And then once that's dry, you wanna make sure that it's nice and dry before you add your white color. Um, but once it is dry, you're gonna take your white um, piping icing and you're gonna add a line. Now, if you have a thick um, line, you can do just one. I kinda added two. just because I wanted to have two. I just felt like it looked better with two. And then I'm gonna take my black, and I could have done like a light green. I just, again, I didn't wanna add a lot of colors, but I'm gonna take my black piping icing. So this is toothpaste consistency. And I'm gonna add the seeds using a teardrop method. So I'm gonna squeeze and billow out a little bit of icing and then I'm gonna pull down. So I'm pulling down through that billow, 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 let it come out, and then pull down. Again, you're gonna squeeze, 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 and then pull down. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. And you're just gonna squeeze, squeeze, squeeze in that one spot, and then pull down. If it doesn't come down, you can always just use your scribe to bring it down like a little bit farther so that it looks like a seed. And then I'm going to add 
some small ones right there. Look how cute that is. Is that not the cutest little watermelon um, mini cookie? I think it's so cute and adorable. I love it. All right, so that is our watermelon. Now let's move on to our hamburger. I'm trying to save all the projector stuff for at one time. Okay. So now we're gonna do our hamburger. We've got our hot dog, we've got our watermelon. You gotta have hamburgers. And I'm gonna do my top bun here on the top. Again, I'm using ivory, the same color I used for my ham, my hot dog bun. Gotta do my bottom bun. And I'm gonna fill it in with my ivory icing, my ivory flood icing. So I'm just gonna use my scribe to move that color around, move that icing around. And then you can add your, where your tomato is going to be. I guess you could say that it's, you could say that it's ketchup if you wanted to, whatever you wanna say, but you would do your line there. Let that dry for about an hour. And then you're gonna add your red here. And then we're gonna add our hamburger. So I'm just using piping icing with my brown, and this is um, totally brown with Cookie Countess, and it's toothpaste consistency. So I'm just gonna add some squiggles here of piping icing to make it look like ground beef on my burger. So no rhyme or reason, just kind of like squiggle it in there. You can use your scribe to move it around as well. And um, let that dry for a little bit before you add the next part. And then we're going to add our lettuce. So I'm using a number um, 101 tip for the lettuce. So this is a Wilton 101 tip. It's got the bigger side and then it's got kind of, it's smaller. And we're gonna use it. You're gonna um, have the skinny side pointing towards you. So I'm gonna put it to its side and then I want the skinny side towards me. And you're gonna just move your hand back and forth like so in like a little wave and that's gonna create your lettuce on your burger. Oh, I forgot to have my burger right here to show you. Okay, and then once you do that, you want to do, you can do seeds on top of your burger. Seeds kind of like with the watermelon, so you're gonna let it come out and just go straight through. And so if they don't make like seeds, you can just use your scribe to elongate them, I guess is what you would call it. Let them go a little further. Isn't that cute? And again, just like with the hot dog, you could airbrush this and it would look really cool um, and just kind of give it a more realistic look even more. And then I'm just gonna add some cheese. I would let that lettuce dry a little bit, but then add my cheese to my burger, because you gotta have some cheese on there, right? 
And there you go. There's your burger. So cute, so cute. Okay, moving on. Let's do our ketchup and mustard. So we're gonna do our ketchup bottle first and you're gonna outline. I'm actually gonna do them at, like I'm gonna go ahead and do them at the same time because they're the same like silhouette. So you're gonna do your line straight across here. You could always use a projector if you wanna get it exact. You wanna just make sure that you get it big enough so that you can write ketchup and mustard on the bottle. Now, every time I look at this cutter, I think it looks like a glue bottle from like Elmer's glue. Does it not? I think so. I'm adding that squiggle so we don't get any craters. And then we're gonna take our red. And I'm first gonna do this section here. This is like the little cap on your bottle. And then you've got your little dome here. And then I've got my yellow. I've got barely enough yellow to make it around. So I'm gonna do the same thing with it. We may have to use ivory for the potato chip. All right, and then we're gonna do, we're gonna use ivory for that potato chip and it'll be totally fine. Okay, so now you're gonna take your red, or you're gonna take your white, your white flood icing, and we're gonna fill in that middle section for both your ketchup and mustard. So you're just gonna fill that in. You want it to be nice and puffy, but you definitely want it to be smooth because you're gonna be writing on it later. So make sure it's smooth. If your icing is not that puffy icing, if you're having trouble getting it puffy or if you're having overflow, try and do a little bit thicker icing um, and that will help. So don't thin it out so much and that will help, should help tremendously. Okay, now we're gonna do our yellow. And so I have enough flood yellow. I just don't have a lot of piping yellow. But we're gonna do yellow up here. And then we'll do our red up here. Okay, so you're gonna let those dry for a good while, and then you're going to, oh, and I don't think I have the one for the ketchup, for the mustard, but we're gonna finish up with the ketchup. The mustard would be just the same steps that you would do. So we'll fill in this here with the tip, and then you're gonna fill in the top part of your ketchup bottle and you'll fill in the bottom. Okay, so you're just gonna fill it in, make sure that it's nice and smoothed out. And then, whoa, that was a big save. That almost went all over my chair. Um, I'm gonna use my red food doodler pen 
and I'm going to do lines for the cap and you may not be able to see it. I'll bring it up to the camera here so that you can see, but I felt like it looked better than if I used a mar I, um, icing, but you can kind of see there that it's got the lines and I want to go ahead and do the chip and we'll do the projector all at once. So let's move to the chip work, chip work bag. We're gonna come back to the um, ketchup bottle in a second, but I wanna do the chip bag. So you've got the red here in the middle, but we're gonna do yellow around all of it, but we're gonna have to use our ivory, which is gonna to be totally fine because you're not even gonna be able to see that outline. We're gonna cover it up. So you're gonna have your bag, and I kind of just did, you know, like a chip bag, like it's not straight across, but I'm super excited about this technique. I'm just showing you how to do this technique. So. You're gonna take your yellow flood icing and you're gonna flood all in here on both sides. So this is, you'll see why I did, why I did the yellow part instead of the red part first, even though you're gonna white, right, can't talk, we're gonna write on the red, but I went ahead and did the yellow first because we're gonna do a really cool technique to give it some texture. You might have seen this before, but I thought this is a really good thing for a chip bag. I've never seen it on a chip bag before. So I'm just trying to cover up that ivory outline so you can't see it, and you really can't even see it. You can't tell that it was not yellow. And it's egg yellow. I think I mentioned that before. Okay, so next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take some parchment paper and I took just like a square, like from my regular parchment paper and you're just gonna crinkle it up like this around the edge and just like around just that paper. So you don't have to like wad it up into a thing. You can wad it up if you really want to, but I'm just gonna crinkle it up and then I'm just gonna flatten it back out and then I'm gonna place it onto my cookie just right down and then I'm going to gently just tap it into place so you want to kind of have it flat so that your icing all of each corner of your icing touches it and so you don't want it sticking up and so I'll pick it up to show you so you can see I want to make sure it's touching on all the corners so you can see here it's touching I can see it's touching all of that and then this right here I'll probably just and so you can see how it is so this is the best part is once um, you want to let it dry for a good like eight hours and then you're gonna take your parchment paper and you're gonna gently peel your parchment paper off. It's the most satisfying part of the whole cookie set. And look at that, you have it upside down. Is that not the coolest? I think it's so cool. If you have any spots that like stick out like here or here, you could always use your microplane but I kind of think it looks really neat and authentic. Like, I think it just like, it's so cool. It gives this like cool crinkly texture to your cookie. And it's, I think it's so cool. So once that's done, I'm gonna add my red here to both sides. And then I will fill in the middle with my red. And 
and then all right and then you're going to let that dry for a good amount of time before you're ready to do your words so i'm going to bring my projector over here to do our words real quick and so we're going to have our words so we've got our ketchup right here so it is in Big letter, so I'm just making it the right size. And I'm just gonna use my marker. And I'm gonna be super gentle and not press down hard. So you wanna make sure that your cookie has dried for about eight hours before you try this so that you don't do that. <laughs> so this one just wasn't dry enough. And so Just trying to be really gentle. Sometimes it can be hard and you get kind of heavy handed. But there's your ketchup. And then you're gonna take your, um, you're gonna take your white piping icing and we're gonna write chips on there chips chips and so I like to go backwards from right to left so I can see what I'm writing so I'm gonna go my S and my P I like to use it either number two tip or a 1.5 when I'm writing. All right, and you could always like write in like net weight or whatever, which is what I did on mine. But so cute. So that is our adorable set. All right, let me get all my pieces together here. I gotta get all my pieces, we're all my people. Oh, chips, mustard. So that is your set. You could put these together. You could put four together and make it a um, mini set. You could do all six and put them in a box. And they could be a set for someone, for a Father's Day gift, for a backyard barbecue. You name it. This set is so cute and perfect for you. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this and that you learned something. So um, if you aren't already, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the button below so that you get notified when any of my new videos drop. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.